Hi, how you doing? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's so nice to have you here. My name is Mariana, but you can call me Mari. And let's talk about all the books I read in January. Alright, so January was a mixed bag in terms of reading tastes. I went from romance to fantasy to manga. I, wa I was all over the place. I'm a mood reader, so I obviously I read what I'm feeling at the moment. So you'll see that there is a lot of different things <laughs> um, that I read throughout January. But first, before I start rambling on about all the books I read, I want to explain why I'm sitting next to all these piles of books and it's because I told you a couple of videos ago that I was getting a bookshelf and that hasn't arrived yet so we're still here and all my books are here stacked next to me but I kind of like it it kind of looks cool I can just like prop up my elbow on top of this pile and you know go like this <laughs> that's that's what's going on with the background I hope you don't mind. Let's get on with the books I read in uh, January. The first book I read in January is Lover Revealed by J.R. Ward. This one is the fourth book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series that I've been reading since last year. It was in my favorites of 2021. It's just so much fun to go back to the vampire nostalgia times where I would, you know, just get immersed into a world of vampires. <laughs> And I've been just having so much fun reading these books and this one is again the fourth one and it deals with a character that has experienced a lot throughout the four books but this novel gives us a chance to actually look at some changes and things that he, he's been going through because he's the only human in this group of vampires so you can imagine that it's it's kind of challenging for him to get around and it was just great to see his perspective i mean obviously these books have a lot of flaws they're not perfect and they are very steamy and erotic so if you're into it then i would highly recommend you pick it up it's just really fun and fast paced there are 19 books in this series so it's quite a lot and i think the 20th is coming out this year so it is a commitment but i am committed <laughs> And so I give this book three stars. Then I read Us Against You by Frederick Backman, which is the sequel, another sequel, uh, <laughs> to Beartown that was in my favorites of 2020. And I don't usually like sequels when it comes to contemporary novels because I find that it's better just to keep it as a standalone. Especially this one, I didn't think, you know, there was more to the story, but obviously there was and I trust Frederick Backman and I was right to trust him because it was a really good sequel. Frederick Backman does have some issues specifically in these two books when it comes to pacing and when it comes to overusing style of writing so he overuses foreshadowing throughout the two novels and so you will be reading something about a character and then he'll go back and say but he didn't know that something was coming or something like that obviously in better words so it kind of like takes you out of the story a little bit and you're like okay yeah sure i guess but it kind of gets tiring after a while and you're reading the same thing over and over again like you know something bad is going to happen and you don't particularly know exactly what but uh, it's kind of obvious as the story develops and you'll and, and he tells you exactly what's going to happen so it kind of loses a little bit of its power because it, it can have a purpose when you're trying to engage the reader but if you overdo it it can get a little tiring so that's one aspect that i don't necessarily enjoy and i i find that i see it more in these two novels than in his other novels but other than that this book deals with the repercussions of what happened in the first book in the first book it's um the first book is about Beartown, a little town that is all about hockey the politics the relationships between neighbors every single interaction is all about hockey and so these people live for it and everything kind of collapses when one of the teenage boys in the team sexually assaults a girl and so we follow the what how the characters process this information some of them do it in a way that is compassionate and caring and others go completely the other way and become very angry and violent and so we see how people process whether they believe victims whether they they would rather you know that everything remains the same it's all about keeping appearances and it was it was a really good book i would highly recommend 
reading the first one and if you like it then obviously read the sequel and I gave it four stars. Then I read Ese Verano Oscuras by Mariana Enriquez and this is a Spanish short story. She is better known for her collection of short stories, The Dangers of Smoking in Bed, which I also have in this pile of books somewhere. Um, and it, that one is really really good, I highly recommend it. And this one was also very good. Mariana Enriquez has a way with words when she's describing very, very dark shit. This short story is about a murder that happens in an apartment complex. And we follow these two teen girls as they talk about the nature of the killer, the nature of serial killers in general, how some humans can gather up a lot of darkness inside them. And they take kind of like a philosophical but also childish look at uh, human nature and it was very interesting even though it was like only like 70 pages it was very engaging and it was a fast paced read so I enjoyed it quite a lot and I am planning on reading every single work <laughs> that Mariana Enriquez has published because I really like her writing and I gave this three stars then I read the Bookshop of Second Chances by Jackie Frazier. This one I listened to as an audiobook. This one is about a woman who is desperate to turn a new page, to change her life, and so she moves to a Scottish coast. She finds herself locked in a battle of wills, so it's like a legal battle between her and this infuriatingly handsome bookseller. So it's set in a bookstore in Scotland, and it's just such a delightful setting. This was such a charming book to read. It's deep in its content matter. I was surprised by how engaged I was with the main character. Her name I think is Leah or Le Leia? Leia? Leia, I think. It was Thea. Thea. You dumbass. <laughs> It's very nice to see a romance book from a perspective of a middle-aged woman. I don't think we get those enough. And I also really enjoyed the love interest who is brooding and dark and has done kind of shitty things in the past, but he's trying to like right the wrongs that he's done. So yeah, I really enjoyed it and I gave it four stars. Then I finally finished Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. And oh boy. I've been reading this book for what feels like years. I think I started it in October of last year and it's just, it's been dragging so much. It's about a guy named Laszlo who is an amazing dreamer. He's able to vividly observe things in his dreams that nobody else can. And he's been obsessing about this city called Weep for as long as he can remember. And so when the opportunity arises where he is able to go to the city, he obviously takes the opportunity and joins a group of people who are traveling to the city of Weep. The main issue I had with this book was its pacing. I really liked the first 100 pages, 150 pages. I read it in one sitting, I was really engaged. And then we get to like the 200 page mark and a romance plot gets introduced that I didn't enjoy. I didn't like the romance in this novel. I would have liked it much more if the author had just focused around the adventurous part rather than make it like a romantic novel. So it took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting it and I didn't really like it. So it just bore me a little bit to be honest because I, I wasn't invested in any of the two characters and I've heard many good things about it. It just wasn't for me. Then I read The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson. In this novel, we follow Cossie Carter in 1936 in the deep woods of Troublesome Creek, Kentucky. She is a blue-skinned girl who is the last living female of the rare blue people ancestry. She becomes a librarian in this story and we follow her as she interacts with the other town folk and how she struggles to find a place in society because she is discriminated against because of her skin color and her skin color sets her apart from everyone else. This novel was very very interesting. I enjoyed reading a novel about the time period that I may not know much about and about a group of people that I knew existed and at some point I saw a documentary about people who had blue skin but I kind of forgot about it and so once I started reading the novel and realized that it was based on 
a true group of people that actually lived in Kentucky during that time it was just mind-blowing and eye-opening and I really liked that the author included a little note at the end of the novel describing her research process for uh, writing it and it was honestly a really 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 good novel and I think I will reread it at some point in the future because I think I can get a lot more from a reread so I gave this book four and a half five stars and then I read The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake and in this book six people six different characters with different very different personalities are chosen to be part of a select and elite society in the library of Alexandria and they are called the Alexandrians they are all magicians wizards so this is like a magic school kind of and kind of like a dark academia setting and they are able to do things and not a lot of people can do so that's why they are selected they're like special this is a very hyped novel so I was expecting great things and I wasn't disappointed I liked it I thought it was entertaining I haven't read a lot of fantasy novels set on magic schools but I heard so many things about this novel that I finally decided to read it and it was very entertaining it was very fast-paced oh yeah I forgot to pick it up so I like the characters as you can see I marked a lot of places where the characters would say something witty my favorite character was Parisa who is a telepath and she was just extremely witty and sensual and I really liked whoop, took off my earring <laughs> and I really liked reading from her perspective so it was an entertaining novel uh, to read and I give it three stars then I read They Never Learn by Lainey Fargo which is about uh, Scarlett a professor who murders men who do horrible things to women and Carly who is a university student trying to survive her freshman year. I did a whole review about this novel, comparing it to one of my favorite films, A Promising Young Woman, so if you want to go see more, go check it out on my channel. And I gave it five stars. Then I read the complete manga of Kimetsu no Yaiba, also known as a Demon Slayer, by Yokoharu Gotuge. Gotoge. I'm so sorry, I'm so butchering his name. You may have heard of it because it's a fa very famous anime and I actually started watching the anime first and I loved it so I needed to I needed more of the story so I, I read the whole manga in like two days because it was just so addicting This follows Tanjiro Kamado's life as is turned upside down the moment a demon kills his whole family and his sister is turned into a demon he is determined to turn his sister back into a human. Tanjiro is just such a cute little little baby. He's just, oh, I love him so much. And I love the characters and I love Senitsu and Inosuke, Inos, Inosuke, 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 Inosuke. I'm so sorry. Ah! Inosuke, Inos Inosuke. I just think it's so funny that I kept messing up is in us in us Inosuke's name, which is probably still not right um, because he in the anime gets everyone's name wrong all the time. It's so funny. <laughs> I love everyone in this series so much and Nesuko such a queen and I think it's a really good starting point for those who don't necessarily like manga because it just sucks you right in and you're immersed in the story it's very easy to follow there's a lot of action scenes it's quite gory and I wasn't expecting it to be quite so gory but I loved it so I gave it five stars and I counted as two novels because obviously it took me a while to read I read like 105 chapters so in total there is 205 chapters but since I watched the anime I kind of just got anxious and I needed to know what happened so I started from the point the anime ends and it hasn't ended yet so I'm up to date with the anime and now I'm up to date with the manga and I like the ending and I like everything so 
those are all the books I read in January and I wanted to ask you a question. Do you consider manga as reading? Can you put it like on Goodreads or how can you track it? Because for me it was difficult to count every single volume as a novel or a short story or a book because it takes me less time to read um, a manga. But since I read 105 chapters, I counted 50 chapters as different short novellas or as novels per se. So what do you think about it? And I kind of, I've had this question for a while because obviously you're getting content, you're reading words, maybe faster. And if it was just images, is it reading? Is it observing? What word would we give it? And I think this is a very interesting discussion that I may go into later on. I just kind of wanted to leave you with a question. I hope you have an amazing week. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another video soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>